All right, I absolutely love making these videos, my Lightroom editing workflow. I've made a load of these videos in the past and I find that every single time I make them, I stumble upon new workflows, new things that I haven't touched on before. And today I'm gonna to be editing this photo. This is a portrait of my friend Carly that I shot actually years ago, years and years ago in downtown LA. And today we're gonna to be taking it from this to this and I'm gonna be walking you through every single step of the way. So without further ado, let's dive into Lightroom Classic and let's get this video started. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom, but before we dive into everything, I wanna let you know that I'm not going to be walking you through how to get your photo into Lightroom and all the other little bells and whistles that come along with Lightroom, the overall layout and how all the tools work. If you wanna see a complete one hour and 10 minute video breakdown of Lightroom Classic in 2025, you can do so by one of the cards on screen. Now, go ahead and watch that video and then come back and watch this video. I know it's a long time investment, an hour and 10 minutes, but I show you genuinely every single thing that you need to know inside of Lightroom. So with that now out of the way and with hopefully with your photo now inside of Lightroom Classic, we can dive in. So just like any good edit should start, we are gonna first kick things off with the crop. And this is because we wanna make sure that we know exactly what we are and aren't editing. I don't think that there's any reason to go through a full edit and then just crop it at the end because you've probably spent a little bit of time working on parts of your image that you're just gonna cut out later. So let's open up our crop tool and we are just going to slightly rotate this a little bit to make sure the buildings in the back are nice and straight. I made a little bit of an ear problem issue. I made a bit of a mistake, if you will, when I was taking this photo and I just cut off a little bit of Carly's hand there. My bad, I was shooting at 153 millimeters. Probably should have zoomed out a little bit or just taken a few steps back, but hey, we all make mistakes. Anyway, I'm not gonna crop this image for four by five. I think it's a little bit tight for four by five. So I'm actually gonna leave it at its original crop aspect ratio and I'm happy with how things are looking. Now that the crop's out of the way, Let's get into the good stuff. So let's first kick things off in the basic tab where we are going to correct the white balance. I find that there's a little bit of a purple sort of tint and hinge in this image. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly drop the purple tint a little bit and then I'm also going to increase the warmth in this shot as well. Nothing too crazy, but I want this to kind of have that warm sunset glow feeling to it. So that's why I'm gonna be increasing the temperature just a little bit. Overall, I think the colors are looking pretty balanced here, so we can now move on to our exposure and everything else below. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the colors are looking here, so I'd say we're able to move on. The contrast and exposure sliders I'm gonna leave as is, but we will slightly look at increasing our shadows just a touch to bring up a few more details in her dark coat and more or less, maybe a little bit of the highlights we might also look at increasing. This is just making the sky and a few of the buildings behind her stand out a little bit more. And I find that this overall adds to our image, so I'm pretty happy with how things are looking. Now let's move in to the presence tab down here. As always, I'm going to be looking at dropping the clarity and dropping the texture. This not only gives a really nice sort of flattering look to our subject, but it also helps soften out those harsh highlights in the background and makes the image overall just seem a little bit softer. Now, since we're going for that warm, soft sunset glow sort of feeling, I'm gonna leave the dehaze slider at zero because if we increase this, things just get a little bit too contrasty and colorful. And if I decrease it, things just get a little bit weird and hazy. So I'm really happy with how that's looking so far. Jumping over the vibrance and saturation controls, if you've watched any of my previous Lightroom editing workflows, you'll know that all of the color stuff happens in the color mixer and the color grading tools. So I'm gonna leave that as is for now, so we can move on to the tone curve. Now with the tone curve, I'm going to be adding only two points for this shot. First one I'm going to be moving is our bottom left blacks dot, and we're just gonna be pulling this up a touch, adding a nice little fade over our shot. And then coming into the shadows point here, we're just gonna be dropping them a touch and then opening up our mid-tones point, we are just gonna be pushing that up quite a lot just there. If we turn this off, and back on, this has added a nice level of contrast, but it's also given our shot a nice little cinematic fade as well, which is a look that I'm absolutely in love with. Okay, moving on to the color mixer tab now. This is where we're going to be able to isolate and really sort of adjust individual colors, which is gonna be super powerful for this shot. 
Overall, I'm seeing a lot of warm tones and not too many blue tones in this image, but we've still got a little bit of blue like down here in the, I don't know, the ledge that she was sitting on. So first things first, let's look at backing the blues and the purples off. I wanna make sure that with the purples, the magentas, the reds, and the oranges, that we're not affecting her skin tone too much because there are parts of our bodies that sit on these color spectrums. So when I'm moving the purples and the magentas, the reds and the oranges around, I've also gotta make sure that I'm looking out for things like her lips, the eyes, skin, hands, legs, you name it, uh, to make sure that we're not making things look just way too unnatural and weird. So let's just slightly back off the purple slider a little bit up here. Let's also look at backing off the aquas and the greens as well. I don't see too many greens in the background or too many aquas either, but either way, I find that just dropping the saturation of these colors, even though I can't see many of them in the shot, is just kind of good housekeeping and a good practice to keep in mind. Now, I definitely see a lot of yellow and oranges in this image, but before we go ahead and play around with the saturation levels of those, we're gonna dive into the hues of those colors. Now, the reason that I didn't play around with the hue values of the green, aquas, blues, and purples before I desaturated those is because I don't want them in my shot at all. And while we'll adjust them slightly in the hues, I wanna make sure that they're killed off before I go in and adjust the other colors. So first things first, let's have a look at our orange slider. Moving that all the way to the left, also changes the color of her hair ever so slightly. So we're just gonna move it to the left a little bit, making it a little bit more orange. And then with our orange slider here, we also might just ever so slightly, this is gonna be the skin tone color without a doubt. We are just gonna move this over to the left a little bit, just like that, making sure that we're not making her too warm or too orange and making her look unnatural. Now coming into our green slider, I wanna make sure all the greens in the background are warmer. I wanna make sure all the aquas are a little bit cooler the blues, we can make them maybe a little bit to the teal side to sort of help soften them out a little bit. And then with the purple slider, I'm gonna push them over to the blue side quite heavily. And now just with our color mixer and those changes only, we've gone from this to this, which is super subtle, I know, but on an image like this where I'm not looking to explode one color and make it super over dramatic, small little changes like this is what adds up to a really good edit. So now that our hue sliders are out of the way, I'm gonna move back into our saturation sliders. Having a look at the orange slider, I'm probably gonna leave this as is because I don't wanna play around with her skin tone at all. With the yellow slider though, we could probably back this off a touch as we've got a lot of yellow in the background and obviously her hair as well is falling inside of the yellow color. But if we just back this off a little bit, it doesn't give too much of an impact on her hair, but also tends to sort of cool down the city a little bit behind her, which is looking pretty nice. Overall, I'd say I'm happy with the saturation sliders. When it comes to the luminance sliders, maybe increasing the luminance of the yellows a touch. This is how bright or how dark a color is going to be. And then overall, I'm probably gonna leave everything as is. Maybe a little bit of luminance pushed into the orange color there to sort of help brighten her up and help brighten a few things up behind her in the city as well. All right, moving on from the color mixer tab, let's now get into the color grading workflow. First things first, let's uh, make our way to the highlights. And I already know that we're adding warmth into the highlights. We're really looking for that warm sunset glow. So adding blue here would just make no sense or any other color would make no sense. I wanna make sure our image is looking nice and warm. So with that in mind, we're also gonna do the same thing with the mid-tones here, except we're gonna back these off. I don't wanna go too overkill. And then we might add a little bit of a contrasting color by adding just a little bit of blue into our shadows. And when I mean a little bit, I mean just a little bit. If you find these tiny little circles a little bit too finicky to play around with, you can dive into the individual colors up here at the top, and then you have the ability to have a much bigger slider, which is ideal. So we wanna back these off a lot. A lot, a lot. I don't wanna to add too much in there at all. I'm gonna leave the mid-tones where they are and then we might look at increasing the highlight warmth just a little bit. Maybe the mid-tones are muddying, muddying things up just a bit. If we back those off and we back the shadows off as well. Hmm, I'm finding her, the skin tone in her face is just looking a little bit pale after we made these adjustments. I don't wanna push this too far. Yeah, see that's a nice contrast, but as soon as we add a little bit of warmth into the sky, 
feel like things just get a little bit washed out. We can of course come back and change this in our masking workflow. So for now, let's keep those midtones a little bit nice and warm and I'm not gonna add any blue into the shadows. I'm gonna leave these as is. So moving past the color grading tool, let's get into the sharpening tool. What we're gonna do here is we are gonna add a load of masking because I really wanna make sure that I'm only gonna be sharpening our subject and not the city behind her, which is very much so clearly blurry and out of focus. So I'm gonna hold Option on Mac, it'll be Alt on Windows, and then we're just going to increase the masking pretty much all the way up. And everything in, oh, everything in white here is going to be sharpened, it's gonna be affected, and everything in black here is not. So you can more or less see everything behind our subject and our entire subject as well, apart from the outline of her, is, uh, is masked out and just the outline and a few little details in the hair and the face uh, and even her hand in the bottom left corner is masked in. So now we are able to probably increase this just a little bit. Things are looking nice and sharp. If we turn this off and back on, it's such a subtle change, such a subtle change. Either way, I would say things are looking pretty good. Moving on, noise reduction, AI noise reduction. We definitely don't need to do any AI noise reduction here. We were shooting at 100 ISO, so I'm happy with how things are looking. We're gonna enable the profile correction, and we're also gonna enable chromatic aberration. I don't see any chromatic aberration in this shot, but we do have dark shadows and bright highlights contrasting, so just for good measure, we're gonna turn that on. As you can see now, I was shooting with the Canon 100 to 400. I loved this lens. This has gotta be one of my all-time favorite lenses. However, unfortunately, not only do I not shoot Canon anymore, but I don't even have the Sony equivalent of this lens, which is a little bit of a shame. But either way, moving on, transform. We're gonna leave this as is. I'm already happy with how the crop is looking, so we don't need to adjust anything there. Lens blur, I'm also really happy with the background blur of this image, so I'm happy to continue. The effects, we will add a little bit of grain to this shot, nothing too crazy. We're just gonna add, oh, let's go up to 20 there. We can also increase the size and the overall roughness, especially in the shadows, we're probably gonna notice this if we turn this off and back on. Huge fan of how this looks. It just sort of gives the photo a little bit more of a filmic vibe, even though that's not the vibe that we're after in this edit. Overall, I find that just gives it a little bit more character and texture, and I really like the look of it. Now moving into our calibration tool, the only color I wanna be adjusting here is our blue primary. You can see if we push things over to the left, we really get this really harsh orange and teal look. And if we push things over to the right, we get this sickly yellow and purplish kind of look. So what I'm gonna do is just push things over to the left a little bit, and we're also going to increase the saturation there as well. So let's quickly have a look at our base edit before and after. I much prefer how things are looking now, that's for sure. And with all of this out of the way, we can now dive into my favorite part of editing, which is the masking workflow. So let's open up our masking tool because I can almost guarantee you we've got quite a lot of masks to add to this shot. The first one that we're gonna add is a big radial gradient over our subject. We're gonna invert it and then drop the exposure. This is giving us a controlled vignette and I really like the way this looks. I add it on genuinely nearly 99% of the shots I, I edit. Anyway, after that one's done, what we're gonna do is add a linear gradient and we're going to just come up from the bottom here and we're going to drop the exposure just a touch sort of making the ledge that she's sitting on a little bit less noticeable and a little bit less eye-catching if you will so now that that one is out of the way let's add another radial gradient to our shot now what we're going to do here is we're looking at this image and we're finding that the direction of the light coming into the shot is coming from the left side of our image. So what I'm gonna do is add a radial gradient over the left side of our shot and then I'm gonna look at increasing the exposure just a little bit there to sort of emulate light coming through into our image. I'm gonna come down to the bottom here of our masking effects and we are going to just drop the dehaze a touch. We're gonna to drop the clarity a touch. We don't wanna to go too crazy here though, and make things look unnatural. And then we're also going to come up to the temperature here and we are going to increase this ever so slightly. I would say that looks pretty good. We can turn an individual mask off by just hovering over it and then clicking on and letting go off on the eye. So before and after. 
Really like the way this image is looking. Now we're only gonna add a handful more masks here. Another one that we're gonna do is another radial gradient just here. We're gonna cover this building right there. If I turn the overlay off, you can see that there's like this really harsh orange building. I have not liked that the entire time we have been editing. So let's turn that overlay back on. We're gonna come in here and just kill off the saturation on that building. Okay, maybe this isn't the right tool. Let's get the brush mask and let's brush this in because I also don't wanna affect her skin just peeking through of her shirt right there. Well, of her sleeve, I should say. Um, so now that we've kind of colored in this building, I wanna make sure that we're sort of getting everything there. We can just come to the saturation slider, kill this off. And now that blends in so much better with the background. Like it just looks like it fits in versus if we turn this off, it just stands out way too much. Now, overall, I would say we're pretty much nearly done. We might add one last mask and that would be one from the top right here. We don't wanna hit our subject at all. And we might just look at increasing the highlights, uh, sorry, increasing the exposure just a little bit. And we also might look at decreasing the clarity and decreasing the dehaze, just helping sell that really nice, bright, sunset vibe, sunset glow, if you will, behind our subject. And now I would say things are looking pretty good. One last change I wanna to make to this image, and that is right here. Since we don't have too much room to play around with the crop on this shot, this little, I don't even know what to call it, like kind of area, in our image right here has been annoying me the entire time we have been editing. So what I'm gonna do is open up the little eraser tool. We are not gonna use generative AI for this. I don't think we need to. Let's just make this a little bit bigger and then we can paint over here. Hopefully that just disappears. Okay, we're probably gonna need another one. Let's paint over it again. And now it's gone, perfect. So a little before and after you can see that just sort of cleaning up the edges of the shot right there where something's clearly cut off and I find it pretty distracting can really, really change how an image looks. But anyway, there we go. We have now wrapped up this photo edit. We're taking our image from this to this. Anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. If you learned something new, let me know what it was in the comments below. And if you wanna continue learning about photography, videography, and editing, you should go ahead and check out this video here, and I'll see you over there.